Hi, welcome to our CoLab tutorial of on-chip training with parameter shift. In this tutorial, we will first introduce parameter shift rules, and next we will show the code to train a model with parameter shift rules. And at last, we will show an example, a, two, a, a simple two-qubit model for a simple two-classification test. Uh, we show this example because we want to show a real case that training a model to convergence on real quantum computer. Uh, so we set the model to very simple. The model only contains three, three trainable parameters. And we also set the task, the data set, very simple. The data set only contains 121 training samples. As the model is simple and the data set is simple, training this model for this data set on real quantum computer is relatively easy. In this tutorial, you will learn parameter shift rules and how to use parameter shift rules to cal calculate gradients and use the gradient to train a model. Uh, first, let, let's have a look at the intro introduction to, pr to parameter shift rules. Uh, Previously, our quantum model was based on Qiskit and PyTorch, and uh, we all remember that when training traditional neural networks, uh, we use back backpropagation to cal calculate gradients. Uh, once we did an inference of the model, uh, PyTorch will automatically build a computational graph. We can calculate the gradients for each node in the computational graph in a reversed order based on the chain rule. This is called backpropagation, forward and backward. Uh, and uh, then we look at the parameter shift rules. As we all know, when executing a quantum circuit on real quantum computer, we cannot observe the intermediate quantum state. So backpropagation to calculate the gradients are impossible when our circuits run on real quantum computers. Parameter shift rules offer us a technique to calculate the gradients only by doing inference. Uh, for a circuit function f theta, we can calculate f prime theta by shifting theta twice and subtract one result from the other and multiply it by a factor. Uh, the figure below describes the workflow of how to calculate the gradient of the parameter in a four qubit circuit. Here, this is the positive shift and this is the negative shift. We got two circuit output and we subtract the circuit outputs to get the gradient of the parameters with respect to the circuit output. Suppose an m qubit quantum circuit is parameterized by n parameters theta, theta 1 to theta n. The expectation value of measures of the circuit can be represented by a circuit function f theta. Whereas theta i is a scalar parameter whose gradient is to be calculated, and the u theta i is the gate where theta i lies in. Here, for notation simplicity, we have already absorbed the unitaries before u theta i into psi. Uh, the unitaries after u theta i and the observables are fused into q hat. Usually, the rotation gates used in qnn can be written in the form in this form. Uh, here, each is the permission generator of u with only two unique eigenvalues, positive one and minus one. In this way, the gradients of the circuit function f with respect to theta i are uh, this, this equation. Here, the theta positive and the theta negative are the positive shift and the negative shift of theta. Note that this parameter shift rule is fundamentally different from any numerical difference, me difference methods that only approximate the directional derivatives. Instead, the equation calculates the exact gradient with respect to theta i without any approximation errors or numerical issues. We apply softmax on f theta. f theta is the circuit output. We apply softmax on circuit output f theta as the predicted probability for each class. Then we calculate the cross entropy between the predicted probability distribution P with the target distribution T as the classification loss L. 
Then the gradient of the lost function with respect to theta i is this, this equation. Here, the gradients of the parameter theta i with respect to f theta can be calculated on real quantum computer by the parameter shift rules. And the gradient of the f theta with respect to loss can be efficiently calculated on classical devices using backpropagation supported by automatic differentiation frameworks, e.g. PyTorch and TensorFlow. Next is the derivation of the parameter shift rules using, using our QN models. Uh, the, in the derivation, we assume the unitary where theta i lies in is Rx. And after the derivation, uh, we can see without a loss of generality that the derivation holds for all unitaries of the, this form, e.g. Rx, Ry, Rz, Xx, Yy, Zz. All these gates fits for this derivation. The Hermitian generator of all these gates is a Hermitian matrix with only two eigenvalues, positive one and minus one. Then we train, we show the code to train a model with parameter shift rules. Uh, first, let's install. And I will skip the installation in this video. Now the installation is over. Uh, let's see we, how to build a quantum model. Mm. In this model, we have a encoder that can encode the 4x4 image to the quantum state. And we also have a set layer 0 as our answers. The set layer 0 helps us implement the RZZRY layer. We build a dict describing our answers architecture. There are two blocks, means we have two RZZ and RY layers. Here, our circuit is a, a four-qubit circuit, so an RZZ layer is four RZZ gates, um, qubit 0 and 1, qubit 1 and 2, qubit 2 and 3, and the qubit 3 and 0, forming a circle. And the RY layer is basically four RY gates on each qubit. In each block, there are one RZZ layer and uh, an RY layer. And so there are two layers in each block. As there are two blocks, so basically our answers and architecture is an RZZ layer followed by an RY layer, and then an RZZ layer followed by an RY layer. And at last, we have a poly Z measure on each qubit. Uh, when forwarding, we've downsampled the image from 28x28 to 4x4. Then we show the code to build the function of parameter shift rules. The function can shift the parameters and calculate the gradient of the expectation value of each measure for each parameter. It returns both the expectation values and the gradient for each parameters. First, we, we collect all the trainable parameters to the parameter list. Uh, for each trainable parameters, we firstly shift the parameters to its positive shift and uh, calculate a uh, circuit output, circuit output 1. And then we do the negative shift and uh, calculate circuit output 2. And then we shift back, and uh, we can calculate the gradient of the parameters with, res with respect to the circuit output. Then we set the weather using GPU, using CUDA, and we set the number of epochs is 15. We set the atom optimizer and the cosine annealing learning, learning rate scheduler. And then we load the data site. The data site is a tooth classification data site. We only care about the digits 3 and 6. And then we build the data loader. 
Then we train the model. Uh, during each training step, we calculate the gradient twice. First, we calculate the gradient using backpropagation, and uh, in the second time, we calculate the gradient using parameter shift rules. Uh, first, let's look at the way to calculate the gradients using backpropagation. First, we calculate the model outputs. And uh, as our circuit is a 4 qubit circuit, we sum each two of the each two of the outputs to one, so we can change the four output to two outputs. Then we do the log softmax and calculate the cross entropy loss, and uh, call loss dot backward to call back propagation. And at last, we record the gradient of each parameters calculated by backpropagation. And the uh, next is the step to calculate the gradients by parameter shift rules. Uh, we put this parameter shift rules under the context touch dot no grad. This means PyTorch will not build the uh, computational graph when executing this. And uh, after we get the circuit outputs, we do the same as above to the circuit output, uh, log softmax and uh, cross entropy loss. And uh, here we call loss dot backward to call back propagation from loss to the circuit output. The back propagation process stops at the circuit circuit output because the circuit output is the start node of the the whole computational graph. Then, for each trainable parameters, we multiply the gradient of each param parameters to the circuit output with the gradient of each of circuit output to the loss. Then we get the gradient of each parameters to the loss, and this is the gradient we want. And the optimizer update all the parameters based on this gradient. And then now the training is over. Uh, and we can plot and compare these two gradients. We have recorded two sets of gradients for calculated by backpropagation and the parameter shift rules respectively. Now let's plot these gradients. Uh, and we can validate that the gradients calculated by parameter shift rules are exactly the same as those calculated by back propagation. And the blue line is the gradients in each step calculated by back propagation. And the orange triangle is the gradient calculated by parameter shift rules. You can see each orange triangle lies exactly on this blue line, which means our workflow of parameter shift rules to calculate gradients is correct. And uh, then we show a simple two qubit model for a simple two classification task. And we show this simple model and a simple task, which is actually the simple Data side, because we want to show a real case to calculate the, the gradient on real quantum computer and train the model to convergence on the real quantum computer. Uh, first, let's let's look at the data side. We create this data side. The, the data side is a simple two classification data side from this paper. And then we created our quantum circuit. Uh, the circuit is really simple. It only has one gate as the encoding gate, and it only contains three trainable parameters, and a, a, a C0 gate, and a two poly Z minor. The circuit, uh, when executing the model, uh, we firstly transform the input xy to the phase arc sine, the square root of x plus y minus xy. 
and then we fit the face to the RY gate. This is the encoding. And after the answers, the two expectation values from two measures are the circuit outputs. Outside the circuit, we add a logsoftmax function to the output and get the predictions for each class. Uh, load the dataset. The dataset only contains 121 training samples. It's really small. Then we can train and validate our circuits. And the model is a two qubit model, so there is a slightly difference to the process of the QN in the last case. Uh, after we get the circuit outputs, we directly apply uh, the log soft max to the output and uh, calculate the cross entropy loss. Then we can train and validate the model on IBM Q Quito. You need to import Kickskid processor from TorchQuantum.plugins to create a processor that handles your access to the real quantum computer. You can set whether you use real quantum computer or Kiskit noise model by this. If you set use real quantum computer equals true, you will use the real quantum computer. If you set it to false, you will use Kiskit noise model. And uh, you can change the name of your backend. Then we call model.setKiskit processor to attach the processor to your model. Here, we, we want to train the simple model for five epochs. It usually takes 10 hours to train the model for one epoch. So I only trained the model for one epoch. Here, you can see after one epoch, the accuracy of the model is 95% is relatively high. The model is already converged. Also, if you want to use your advanced token, you can replace our token with your own token in, in the installation. Here, you can replace our token with your own token. It will make the training faster. Okay, here comes the end of the video. If you have any questions, welcome to contact us.